Hi neighbors, my name is Hannah. Welcome back to my channel, Pretty Hippie Me. Welcome to the soft glow of my early morning filming at work. And welcome to Foundation Week, a kind of personal challenge slash journey, <laughs> journey? <laughs> A personal challenge slash journey slash discovery process that I've been on for the past seven and a half ish days trying to figure out what is the right foundation for me why does my lip look off center from my face I literally I think that it's the glare of the light on my lipstick Just, just pretend, okay? Just go with me. Anyway, <laughs> so it's foundation week. I've been exploring, journeying, discovering what is the right foundation for me. So over the past seven to eight-ish days, I've tried out seven to eight-ish foundations. We'll talk about it, it'll make sense. <laughs> I specifically tried to get stuff that I have not tried before. Powder foundations and CC creams and tinted moisturizers, a real like spectrum of different types of things. So if you have a similar skin tone to me, similar skin type, I'm oily combination skin, then this might be a really great video for you to see what's out there for you, but also to see good affordable foundations. Because everything on this list, nothing was over $20. The Priciest was 16. We're gonna get into that and I'm gonna tell you about the uh, revelations I've made. Really quick before I do that though, I have a couple things I wanna mention to you. One is I have a brand that reached out to me and offered to send me a product in return for a review in my video. I did accept because it's a perfume company and perfume is one of those things that I am very picky about. <laughs> I have a really hard time finding a scent that I like that's not like vanilla. Also, by the way, this is an honest review. I'm not being paid for this review. The only exchange was that they sent me the perfume in exchange for a review. And I told them I'm gonna be honest, so I'm gonna be honest. The brand that reached out is Dossier, and I really like the way that they do things. So they send you the perfume, but they also send you a little tester. How do they put it? Any scent you order comes with a sample that you can test before opening the full size 50 milliliter bottle. Don't like the sample? Just return the package with the 50 milliliter bottle and you will get a full refund. Returns are free, no questions asked. So I think that that's awesome. And on that note, I've been working solely from the sample because I want to give away the perfume. The whole thing with Dossier, our mission is to deliver the highest quality luxury inspired fragrances at a fair price. So this one is inspired by Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue for Women Eau de Toilette. I have not smelled that scent before. I chose it because they titled it Citrus Green Apple. When I saw that, me and my picky brain was like, oh, great, I'm gonna smell like a Granny Smith apple, and honestly, I like that. I like that tart, sour, sweet smell. Unfortunately, I don't like how this scent smells. So they list here all of the different scents that they involve, like top notes, middle notes, bottom notes. One of the top notes is green apple, another one is lime. And I feel like that's what I smell more than the green apple, for sure. And then all of the other surrounding notes, jasmine, amber, cedarwood, musk, I'm getting a lot more of that than I am the top notes. It was called citrus green apple, so I wanted to smell green apple more than anything else. But that being said, it's not a bad smell. I think that most people who like perfumes, you would probably like this. I just think it's not for me. And I think that if you like a kind of complex, multi-layered scent experience, then this will be for you. And I really appreciate the fact that they sent along this sample so that I could try the sample for myself. Now that I have decided that I don't really love it, I can do a giveaway of this unopened perfume to you guys. They were also generous enough to give me a discount link just for you, my neighbors. So check out my description for an exclusive 10% off discount link if you're interested in trying some perfume from Dossier. So if you're interested in receiving this scent, hang around until the end of the video. I'll give you some details on giving this away at the end of the video. But now that we're done with all of that stuff, let's get into foundation week. So like I said, I've been trying to figure out what's the right foundation for me. I've been having a hard time shade matching and during the course of this week, figured out why that is. 
And then aside from shade matching, I have this oily combination skin. So I've been really struggling with like, what's the right formula for me? What kind of primers do I need underneath that formula? Is there a formula where I don't need primers? Like I would really love the type of foundation that I can just put it on and go. So I went into this week just buying a bunch of different varieties of foundations to try out. Every single day I tried a different one, wore it throughout the entire day so I could give you a good wear test. Let's jump in and see how it went. Okay, foundation week, day one, and I figured I would start out with the most unfamiliar thing for me, powder foundation. I'm using the Ulta Beauty Adjustable Coverage Foundation, which I got it because it was affordable, but also because it's oil-free. Fun fact, not all powder foundations are oil-free. I, I've washed my face, moisturized it, done all my normal skincare for the morning. Because this is brand new to me. On half of my face, I'm just gonna put powder on face because I hear powder foundation is supposed to be really good for oily combo skin like mine. On the other half of my face, I'm going to use my primer and a little bit of color corrector. I guess I'll do the right side of my face with just pure powder on the face. Also, I'm using the shade Fair Warm and hoping that the shade match is okay. I had an employee help me. Okay. Yeah, that looks like my neck. I also don't have a mirror because I'm at work. <laughs> it's gonna be a day. Ooh. I like that. And of course the lighting also completely sucks here. I'm sorry about that, guys. Ooh, that's a good color match. Thank you, employee who helped me. I mean, starting off, color match looks good. Coverage looks good. I am very impressed by the redness coverage. We're off to a good start. Now I'm gonna grab my oil and shine control, put that on a few key areas. And this primer usually does have a pretty matte finish. I'm interested to see if the matte finish has any uh, effect of the powder not really adhering to my face as much. And then also, out of curiosity, I haven't tried a powder foundation in decades, so I don't know how it's gonna work over a color corrector, especially a liquid color corrector like this one. So I wanna see if I can do anything about these under eye bags. Don't worry, when I am done doing my makeup, I will like take a bathroom selfie. <laughs> Maybe I should have waited until the sun rose before I did this. <laughs> see, what's interesting, I have combination skin. So like in my oily areas, this definitely feels fine, but I can already feel in my drier areas on my cheeks, it just feels dry. So I don't know if that's something that can be remedied by using a different moisturizer or a different primer in that area. Also, I wonder if I should be like tapping more than pulling. All right, using my little baby mirror here. I mean, yeah, my face looks powdery, <laughs> but the coverage is good. The color match is really pretty nice. I actually probably shouldn't speak too soon until I look at myself in the normal mirror. I'm not gonna do anything else besides a little bit of mascara. One of you guys suggested this mascara, Lash Idol Lancome Mascara. I don't have my eyelash curler with me today, but I was really happy because when I did the photo shoot, um, the makeup artist, she works at Ulta, so she gets a ton of samples. She used this on me and then she gave it to me. So I was like, yes, I'm so excited because that's the one I've been wanting to try and it is a little pricey. So sample size hopefully will be good. I can't find my lip balm and my lips are dry. So I'm just gonna use this Revlon Bullet Lipstick. It's sheer, the shade is Pink Truffle. We know Revlon, we love her. And I'm just gonna get a little moisture on my lips. From my makeshift setup, it looks all right but let's go to the bathroom. Better lighting, we'll see the truth. Okay, I'm conflicted. Cause it's like a little light, but also that's just how my neck looks. <sighs> that's what's hard about foundation. Is do I wanna match my neck or do I wanna look like I'm living? That's why you do like bronzer and blush and stuff like that, so I get it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I love the powdery finish. I feel like I look a little dusty, a little crusty, but I'll see how it wears through the day. I'll update later on. 
Okay, we're about six hours in to me wearing the powder foundation and here is how it looks. You can definitely see that in the areas where my mask touches my face, it has rubbed off, <laughs> which is totally what I expected would happen. Same with the area where my blue light glasses touch my face. However, what's nice about a powder foundation is it is a dry product, so it's a lot easier for me to take it to work and touch up my face. Okay, end of day one, I'm at home. It's about three o'clock. Just like before, you can see that the places that were in direct contact with the mask all day, the powder is definitely gone. <laughs> but when mask time is over, I think it'll really stick around pretty well all day cause like my forehead and under my eyes, like the areas that weren't like touching the mask all day are still pretty like together. Yeah, I just haven't tried a powder foundation, so I really had no idea what to expect. I kind of expected it to be worse. The only thing, and I think this is gonna be an issue in all of my foundation colors, I don't know how to tell the right color for me. Cause like, yes, my skin is this like light yellow, but because of the redness in my face, it almost makes me wonder if I should have like a peachy shade of foundation instead of like just a purely a yellow shade, like a very slight peach, but it just like creeped me out seeing me today with no <laughs> color on my face and just being this neck color. So anyway, I'm home from work now. I'm gonna go do some stuff and I'll see you tomorrow for day two of foundation week. So this basically became my review format for the week put on a new foundation in the morning, check it out in different lightings, both in my studio where I film, my office, extra bedroom, the bathroom lighting, which is much warmer, show it to you at work, in my work bathroom lighting, which is this kind of in-between color, <laughs> and then show you how it wore throughout the day. I wanted to show you every step of the process every single day, but I feel like this video is definitely gonna be over an hour long if I do that. <laughs> so moving forward, I'm gonna show you highlights from each day so that you don't completely hate me by the end of this video. <laughs> Good morning, it is day two of foundation week and I'm excited about this one. It's the e.l.f. color correcting full coverage camo CC cream. The main complaint that I had heard from people reviewing this product was that it was surprisingly drying, especially as a CC cream. However, with oily combination skin, I felt that might actually work to my benefit, and especially the day that I chose to wear this. I had showered that morning, I was full of lotions and potions and very moisturized, so something drying might actually be okay. But I shortly found out my issue was not going to be the formula as much as the color match. I was using shade Fair 140W, the lightest warm toned option. As you can see, it's very <laughs> yellow. <laughs> God. It has a ton of sunscreen in it too. It's SPF 30. The more I applied, the better it looked. And to be honest, the coverage and finish were really great for me. This is dope. Wait, the color match is good. Here's the thing. In that moment, in that lighting, I thought it looked great but soon I realized that I was wrong. Okay, so here's my eternal frustration. Looking at myself in the mirror here in my work bathroom, the color on my face is very yellow compared to my neck and like the rest of my skin. Here's my face, there's my neck. There's a little bit of a difference. With my mask on, it's even more noticeable. This was frustrating because it looked great at home, but bad out in the world. This was the moment that I learned how important my lighting was going to be to properly shade matching. And this is why I spent the rest of the video making sure that I tried out every foundation color in every lighting that I had. Okay, this is the end of my work day. You can see there's some pretty clear marks of where there was some rubbage. That's to be expected, not really a negative against the product. I've been wearing it for almost 12 hours at this point. For 12 hours, it's looking okay. I don't love how this looks with the powder on top of it at the end of the day. But I would definitely try it again in a different color, maybe more of a neutral tone instead of such a specifically warm tone. But I like the quality of it. I like the coverage of it when you first put it on. And when you're not wearing a mask, that's probably the same coverage it'll continue to have during most of the day. 
On day three of foundation week, I tried out the Makeup Revolution Fast Base Stick Foundation because of its glowing reviews from Miss Smoky Glow, who I love, and because I've been looking for a stick foundation to hopefully make for a quick and easy early morning makeup look. I used the shade F6. That's a little dark looking, but also like, okay, I, like I can see it kind of working with my skin. When I first put it on, I had hoped that the color might match, but as I blended it out, I saw a similar problem to yesterday. Okay, yep, uh-huh, this is orange. Mm. Oh boy, oh boy. I tried to stay positive. Straight up yellow foundation, not right for me. This one leaning a little orange might end up being better because my skin is this like, yellow overtone, red undertone, together that makes like a peachy or orangey. I like the finish of this. It was definitely like a fast, easy blend in this lighting. I feel hopeful about it, but I also know that other things that look orange on me in real life tend to look good in this lighting. For the moment, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna go about my day. While I finished up my makeup, I decided to switch course for the rest of the week. I'm doing seven days of foundation testing, but I have not bought all of them yet. There were three more that I was thinking of getting for this week. I'll get those with the color matching information that we've learned in mind, meaning I'll be leaning a little bit more neutral instead of warm toned and see what difference that makes. So that's interesting. When I use this, it's kind of hard to go back in to use it to conceal under eyes. I would need definitely a separate concealer for that. All right. Just to be sure, I checked how my foundation looked in my warm bathroom lighting, and I did get a quick glimmer of hope. To my naked eye, I feel like it looks okay. Which was promptly dashed when I got to work and saw myself in the lighting of my work bathroom. Okay, it's about noon. I've been wearing this foundation for almost 10 hours. My work light tells the truth. I thought that it was orange looking and you can see in this light, yeah, it's orange looking. And this is with just remnants of it left after wearing it all day. Cause a lot of it got on my mask, which is normal, nothing against the foundation. With no mask on, it's not so obvious, but especially with my mask on, there's a clear delineation in color between my neck and like my forehead. I think that I'm right in my assessment that I really need to look at more neutral colors. When I go to pick up some more foundations today to finish out the week, I'm gonna keep that in mind. Good morning. Hi, <laughs> good morning. It is day four, I think, of our foundation week. On day four, with a fresh sunburn on my nose from a trip to the beach the previous day, I tried out the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid. I'd heard a lot about it, both good and bad, but it seemed relatively popular and affordable, so I wanted to give it a shot. I tried it in the shade 25W. Again, in the bottle, it looks like a decent color. With this frosted glass, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what color it is. Hi, Bubba Bubba. You so cute. You so lovely this morning. Just as a note, this was the last more warm leaning foundation that I bought before I found out through this process that I really need more neutral tones. I put today's foundation to a different type of test than the previous days. Today was my day off and I had a lot of housework to do so I was going to be moving and grooving but I wasn't going to be masking up so there were going to be less friction on my face from not wearing a mask and more heat and sweat because I was going to actually be moving around instead of my sedentary office job. Honestly, not a bad color match. Again, it's hard because in this room, I have discovered that how I look under the lights can be deceiving. Oh, I know, sweetie beer, you want pets and scratches. This is not hygienic. Yeah, this is a very watery formula compared to other stuff that I've had recently. And my inexperience with liquidy, watery formulas was going to become an issue in just a moment. I mean, the coverage is good. Dewy without being too much. Yeah, I feel like this is okay. As I topped off my makeup, I noticed something unexpected with the texture of my foundation. You know, it's so weird. Just putting it on for the first time, letting it kind of settle in. It looks the way that other foundations look after I've been wearing it for like a several hours. Like my texture is present. Not sure about this one, folks. 
I'm pretty impressed. Like this is not a bad color match. Would have been more spot on had I not gone to the beach yesterday. <laughs> does look a little bit textured for just putting it on. It took me a few days to realize that the texture was the result of using the wrong application method for this foundation. Later on in the week, I figured out the proper way to apply more liquidy foundations. Okay, so this is after about nine and a half to ten ish hours of pretty strenuous wear. Um, I've done a lot of active chores today. We went on a lot of errands today. I do feel like throughout the day I have enjoyed the color of this foundation and I'm not sure about the wear of it because it's a good skin tone match. It's almost like the wear doesn't matter as much. Okay, good morning! It is day five of foundation week. My shirt is wrinkly and see-through, but I still want to wear it, so I don't care. <laughs> Yesterday, I went out to get some new foundations to fill out the rest of the week. The ones that I thought were going to be available ended up not being available, so I switched strategy a little bit. I was very interested by this Revlon Color Stay Light Coverage Foundation. Ooh. Yeah, this one's also a little more liquidy. So this is the shade 150 buff on the sign. It said it was a neutral tone. It's light coverage, which is not something that I usually do. It scares me a little bit. And it's a 12 hour stay. I figure it might blend in a little easier and better with my natural coloring. Stay well under a mask and be something I can wear to work. Slap it on the face and go. There's five sunscreens listed on the ingredients. I think this is a decent color match. It's a little bit light or it looks that way because my neck is a little more yellow than this shade. I'm struggling with this color matching, man. So, okay, looking at myself here, I definitely feel like the foundation is just like a shade too light. Having foundation that's a shade too light is easier to work with than having something that's too dark. I like the coverage of this. I feel like I could go about my day doing just this and I won't look like a ghost. I'm going to go do some like housework and organizing and stuff. I'll get back to you in a little bit about how it has been wearing. Okay, friends, it's around 1.45, and you can see where my makeup is at thus far. It's definitely a long wear foundation, which I wasn't sure about because of the light coverage. And with it being light coverage, it's lighter weight and all of that. I'm about to leave to go to the doctor. I'm actually going. I'm proud of myself. We'll see how this lasts through a mask. See you in a little bit. All right, this is the end of my day with this light coverage foundation. I just came back from the doctor and you can tell that I was masking. I think I like this. I think it's just like a nice little your skin but better kind of look. And if you're not like touching it all day with a mask, I think it really does have some good staying power. Sorry, my bathroom mirror is dirty. Just really quick, I wanted I wanted to mention something. So yesterday and today, the foundations that I used were both more like watery and liquidy formulas. Yesterday I complained about the finish looking really weird and textury. And today I know that I thought the finish was good, but then I was looking at myself in here and I was like, what is this skin texture going on? And I'm thinking that maybe these like watery formulas, either one, just aren't that good for me, or two, need to be applied with a brush instead of a sponge and maybe the sponge is what's making it have that texture please let me know what you think i'm gonna like wrestle with it in my brain a little bit all right friends we're in the home stretch good morning it's like 3 15 a.m and today i'm trying wet and wild bare focus tinted hydrator again the lighter easier slap it on and go the better and this is oil free and it's a tinted moisturizer which is not what i've done at all this week i don't have any primers on but i feel like ideally i wouldn't have to put primers on with a tinted moisturizer. Ooh, <laughs> that just <laughs> came out so fast. So this is another liquidy formula, like I was talking about at the end of the day yesterday, that the more liquidy ones are the ones that end up more textured on my face. So let me do this side with a sponge. 
and I'll try the other side with a brush. Yeah, see, I can see while I'm putting it on. The sponge is creating this texture, I'm pretty sure. For a moment, I tried applying it with my hands like I would a normal face cream. Yeah, and then if I use my finger like that, it really, really goes in. I spent a couple minutes trying a variety of methods, starting with using my kabuki brush. But then do I have lines from the brush? Instead of using the kabuki brush second over the sponged area, I tried going brush first. Mm, this is not better. Oh, the streaks! I took out my sponge to blend out the streaks and found my answer. Yeah, maybe that's the way. Kabuki and then light sponge. This is, this is good. This is, this is good. This is good looking. Lightweight, easy peasy, throw it on off I go and I don't feel like it's washing me out and making me look ghosty so I don't feel like such a desire to immediately like oh I need to make sure I have blush and contour I can just use this I was loving it and I was excited so I hurried to finish the rest of my makeup so I could go see my foundation in the bathroom and make sure I wasn't seeing things and that it was actually as good of a color match as I thought it was Okay, so I changed my whole outfit, but here's how it looks in the bathroom lighting. Good color match in my opinion. If it wears well through the day, then this could be a very promising product. I can just wear this and go out the door, which I'm late, so I need to do that, but I'll see ya. Okay, I'm at work. It's about 11.30 a.m., so I've been wearing this for about eight hours. I don't know how I feel about the color because in only this lighting, my face looks a little orange compared to my neck. I will pop in here as editing Hannah to say that in editing, it does look a little orange in the bathroom lighting footage as well. Here's how it looks in terms of where there's not like really big clear lines other than like on my nose. <laughs> Everywhere else is kind of more of a gradual transition, but so far, yeah, I like this. Okay, end of day six, foundation number six. I'm back home. This is where we're at with the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. I like it. I like how it wears. Like the top part that did not touch the mask is looking real good. So as I get into mask-free scenarios, it's gonna work as a good like foundation all day wear. I think that they just have less of a specific shade range with a million undertones. I don't really expect that from a tinted moisturizer. And as I get a little more tan into the summer, it'll probably look better on me. Tomorrow, we're going to revisit one of the earlier foundations that I got in a warm tone. I got it again in a neutral tone. We'll see how that looks on me tomorrow. For the last day of foundation week, we revisited the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream in the shade Fair 120N, their neutral fair shade. I really liked the coverage and the wear of it the first time, so I wanted to find the right shade. This formula was less liquidy, so I went straight at it with the sponge. This is light. Oh god. Oh, this is light, man. Oh god. Oh god, it's so light. So this is the thing with CC creams and tinted moisturizers that have small ranges is like the next shade is probably going to be too dark. I don't know if I can fix this. Uh yeah, I have to take this off. Just kidding, I'm keeping it on because I looked at myself in the bathroom mirror and I look okay. So maybe I was just panicking. I am running so late. I'm gonna see how this wears through the day because it looks perfect in my bathroom lights and then I looked in my hallway light in the mirror and it looks okay. Maybe it really is okay and it just looks washed out in these filming lights, which are definitely bright. When I got to work and saw myself in my work bathroom lighting, I saw that while yes, my foundation was a touch too light, it was still the right move for me to go with a neutral foundation. Unfortunately, the bronzer I had chosen was rather warm toned, so it was making my forehead look rather orange. So I just noted to myself, neutral foundation means I have to use a neutral bronzer. I also decided that since you saw the wear test on the more yellow version of this foundation earlier in the week, I was not going to film a wear test for you. You can refer back to that footage for information on how it wears through the day. Hi, I'm going to kind of cheat here and going to make this day like seven and a half of foundation week just because I ordered this foundation in hopes of using it during foundation week and it got here like right after. 
since I have it now. And this is the day that I'm like assessing and filming the outro and like giving you all my thoughts. I figured I would wear it today and let you know my thoughts later on in the day when I film the outro and everything. So it'll be foundation number seven, day number eight. Anyway, it's the Ordinary High Coverage Foundation Formula. These are like under $7, these foundations. It's crazy. I got this in the shade 1.1 Neutral. And at first when I applied it, I swatched it on my arm and it looked super orange but I realized you really really have to shake it up before you use it and then that makes them go away it's on my face I did like a full face today and um I'm looking pretty freaking flawless right now can I just say and I looked at myself in the bathroom mirror and it also looks great there and I like the coverage of this I got a new foundation brush it's an elf buffing foundation brush so I applied it with this and then I went over it with my sponge because it is that more watery lightweight formula and um I'm very happy with it as of first application we'll see how it wears through the day oh I forgot to wear sunscreen too bad too late all right I gotta go all right it's a couple hours later I'm at work and I have to say in all three lightings hand down hand down hands down <laughs> this is the best color match out of all of them. It looks really good. It's a neutral color, but it's slightly warm leaning. Maybe that's what I need, is a slightly warm neutral color. Yeah, I like this. I'm not mad at it. Okay, end of the day with my foundation from The Ordinary. And I have to say, I literally can't tell what kind of coverage is left because the shade match is so good. <laughs> I can't tell where it's rubbed off or not. Definitely my nose. I'm very happy with this foundation. And look at my forehead. No creasing, no lines, nothing. Just good old coverage. <laughs> Feeling pretty good. Okay, my friends. So that was foundation week. Let's recap together the lessons that we've learned. First of all, I learned what I'm looking for in a foundation. Because I tried a variety of formulas with a variety of finishes and coverages, I learned that I really like a skin-like finish, like a your skin but better kind of look, especially for day to day. And while I used to think that I wanted to completely cover up my redness, I now realize that it's a-okay to let some of those natural color variations show through. It doesn't look bad, it just looks human. <laughs> Second, I learned that I'm a neutral toned lady. <laughs> Maybe just like a little bit warm leaning, but generally neutral. This is pretty big <laughs> because I've struggled for a really long time with figuring out my correct shade. Third, I learned that I really prefer more like watery, lightweight foundations. They just feel really natural on me and I just like forget that I'm wearing them. Along these lines, number four, a watery formula does not necessarily mean that it's going to be less coverage. You can have more watery, skin-like formulas anywhere from sheer coverage to full coverage, like the one that I'm wearing today. Next, I learned that I should apply more watery foundations with a brush, and then maybe go over it with a sponge very lightly to get rid of any streaks. That's going to make it much more smooth. I learned that it was worthwhile for me to try out these foundations back to back to back so I could really compare them in my mind without forgetting any of the details of how they worked or how they wore throughout the day. And along those lines, there are a lot of really good, <laughs> affordable foundations. And I've heard this so many times, so like I knew it in my head, but actually going through this process and seeing it for myself really solidified that knowledge. You do not have to spend a ton of money to get a good foundation. None of these foundations were above $16. More expensive does not necessarily mean better. Looking back at the foundations that I tried this week, I'm definitely going to continue to use the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream, the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation, the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator, and what honestly seems like the winner, the foundation I'm wearing today, the Ordinary Coverage Foundation. I'm glad that I threw this on because I'm very impressed with the staying power on this, but specifically I'm really impressed with the finish and the color match 
especially considering this was less than $7. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below what you think was the winner out of the week though, because maybe something looks different to you on camera as the viewer than what I'm able to see. While you're down there in the comments, let me just remind you, we're having a giveaway, the Dossier Perfume, which again, just because the scent was not for me doesn't mean that it's a bad scent or that there's anything wrong with it. Especially if you like the smell of lime, then I think you're gonna like this. And I forgot to mention before, we have a coupon code. I'm gonna put that link in the description to make sure that you get the 10% off. If you want to enter that giveaway, it's gonna be like the last time that I give, did a giveaway. So I need you to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram at Pretty Hippie Me, and then comment below with your Instagram. I'll DM the winner on Instagram. I'm gonna give you guys like a week on Monday of next week. I will do a random number generator and pull a name from the people who did that. And that person will get this perfume. Whenever I can do giveaways and fun stuff, I will do my best to do so. Speaking of Monday of next week, I think I'm going to announce the winner of this giveaway during a Monday live stream, which brings me to the topic of. We have a lot of stuff to go over, okay guys? I have officially decided to switch things up on Mondays. Up until now, we've been trying to do Makeup Monday, Whatever Wednesday, and Fashion Friday. I'm gonna keep Fashion Friday, but I'm gonna meld these two together into Monday Night Lives. I'm really excited about this. I've done a couple of live streams recently. Each one was just like so much fun. <laughs> and I also find that a lot of my Monday content and sometimes my Wednesday content is definitely stuff that would translate well into a live stream format. And then we have each other to talk to and I can get your opinions right there in the moment. And we can really have that community feel that I feel like I've been wanting for the neighborhood. There will definitely be times that I start the live stream with like, okay guys, I want to talk about this. But from there, the live stream can go wherever you guys want to take it. We can talk about drama, we can talk about the news, we can talk about fashion or makeup or life in general. You know the drill. But what's important is that we're there together talking about it. I want to hang out with you guys, basically. <laughs> Monday evenings are going to be our live days because that's just the best, kind of the only day that would work for me with my current schedule. However, please let me know what time is gonna be good for you. I'm thinking either 5, 6, or 7 p.m. EST to be the start time, but I don't know, based on your time zone, if that's at all feasible for any of you, so please let me know in the comments below. I will also do a poll. Like, definitely answer the poll because that's gonna really lead me, but let me know in the comments here as well because then I can make the poll based on what you're already saying in the comments here. So yeah, I'm really excited about Mondays and I hope that you're excited about them too. The people who are there and who are present in the live chats are really going to help shape what Monday Night Lives become. I don't want to necessarily be 100% dictating what the neighborhood does on Monday Night Lives. So if you're interested in being part of shaping the Monday Night Live experience, please, be there. Okay, that took me way too long to talk about. I'm sorry, I just have a lot of updates I wanna tell you guys. Um, so, a thousand years later, I think we are done with announcements and updates. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Was this type of video helpful for you at all? Have you ever done anything like this? This like back-to-back -back comparison of several different foundations. How did it go for you? Have you found your holy grail foundation? Because if you have, let me know in the comments below. Help a girl out. While you're down there commenting, I hope that you like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, and set your notifications to all so you can keep in touch with everything going on here in the neighborhood. I want to get to 10,000 subscribers as fast as possible. That is the next big milestone for me as a young YouTuber. Please do me a favor and subscribe because that gives me the support that I need to be able to create more videos. And let's see how fast we can get to 10k. I, I can see it coming soon. I just need your help. Even if you don't do all of that though, I still want to thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate you and your time and the fact that you are spending your time here with me to the very end of this long, long video. <laughs> I will see you next on Fashion Friday. So much love. Bye.